Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Board Today. This is the place for your fix of all things outdoors and while camping. So today we're going to be having a look at what might just be the best budget ultralight one-person tent on the market. So it is of course the Lantern One Plus by 3FUL. Now I've used this tent extensively over the past year in the UK as well as a five day trip in Norway. So I feel like I've got a really good idea of the pros and cons of this tent. So today we're going to be going through the setup of the tent and I'm also going to be showing you the four season T door in it as well as the mesh J door. And we're going to be comparing the two. So before I show you the actual tent, I'm first going to run through the basic specs and show you the tent in its packed form. So as you can see, it packs down to a really, really compact size. It's approximately 30 by 12 centimeters and the weight is only around 875 grams. And that's including the outer, the inner and the pegs. It, you can buy a separate footprint, which I don't have. That'll take the weight up to around 950 odd. So it's still under one kilogram, which is still really light. And I definitely consider it in the ultralight spectrum of tents. So one of the main reasons this is so light is because it is a trek and pole tent. That basically means it doesn't come with its own pole and you have to use one of your trek and poles. So do bear that in mind that you might need to buy one if you don't usually take one out on your trips. So let's talk about the bag itself. So it's made out of the same silk nylon as the tent. As you can see, it's got these two really handy compression straps on the side. It just means you can really cinch that in to get it as compact as possible. Now, the opening function, as you can see, there's a roll top and there's plenty of extra space in there. So you'll have no issues when you're stuffing this tent in. You know, a lot of tents come with these really tight bags. You'll have no issues with that here. So now we're going to run through the setup of the tent and how to get the perfect pitch. The first thing you want to do is loosely lay it out in the correct position. Now it's not a freestanding tent this, so you do want to make sure you've got your location right straight off the bat. Because you're not going to be able to pick that up and move it later on. So if you look at this black hood, that's going to indicate where the front of the tent is. So just a quick note, the pegs I'm using today aren't actually the pegs that it comes with. Um, the ones it does come with kind of resemble the MSR Groundhog style. They're a bit thinner, they're a bit shorter. And to be honest, they are fine, but I do like to opt for longer pegs just for a bit of extra strength. So I like to start off by pegging one end of the tent out first. And if you look here, you'll notice there's actually two points that you need to peg out, but I like to peg these at the same time. So you see, attached to the inner, you've got this line with a line lock, and then just the same on the outer. So what I'd say is at this point, you don't want to be pegging this out too tight. You want it fairly loose, if anything. Just means once everything's pegged out, you can go in and adjust it properly. So I've found this length, if you leave around two thirds of slack, seems to work just fine. So now I'm going to move on to the other side. So when you're pegging this side out, you want to pull it to the slight tension, but again, nothing that's going to be too tight, so you can just lay it on. And what you want to do as well is you typically want to follow the seams. Just means you're going to pitch it to the right dimensions. And now I'm going to move on to the back. Uh, just keep in mind as well, it wouldn't bother with any of the guy lines at this point. Uh, once the tent's got its structure, we're going to move on to that. So next we're going to get the track and pole set up, and this is basically going to give us the structure of the tent. So it's recommended you set this up to 125 centimetres, and I found that is about right. Uh, what I like to do is set it a little bit higher to 130, and then if I need to, I can just drop it down slightly. So now I'm going to put this in. Um, when you're putting this in, you want to make sure the door is closed and you want to put this in at the point where it meets the apex of the tent. So you'll feel as you put it in, it'll just nestle into the top of the tent there nicely. And then you want to carefully just start to put it up. So as you'll see at the bottom, it's got its own little eyelets that I'm just going to nestle the bottom into. about right again if i need to i can just further drop this very slightly so it's not too tight because that looks like it probably is a little bit too tight on the zips so i found to get the best set with this you want to make sure that the pole is going to be straight it sometimes does have a tendency to lean back a little bit but it does affect the tension on the inner so you want to make sure that that is straight to give you the best structure so next you want to peg out this front guy line and this really is going to give the tent its structure so as you'll see it's attached to this front hood move further down 
and you've got this loop and that's where you're going to put your pipe through and then the second bit of the guy line as you'll see just runs forward and attaches to the front near the zip of the door so as I put that in you can see the tent really does have its main structure now a little bit baggy but at this point I'm going to go around and just make those adjustments and tighten up where it needs to so as I go around to make these adjustments now you can see why it was important at the start to make sure there was that excess slack worth mentioning as well the, uh, the exterior of this tent is made from a sill nylon which is a really strong really light fabric but it does mean when it gets wet it does expand slightly so come the even when the condensation comes or if you're in any sort of vein you'll find the tent fabric will expand a bit which means you might just need to go around again and tighten it up which again that's another important reason why we leave a little bit of slack so at this point if you do realize that you've got no slack left it just means you won't have any excess to tighten up overnight so if you do find yourself in that position i'd just loosen this back off and peg it out again at this point as well as doing the outer i am going to tighten the inner as well right so now that's all tensions off what you want to do next is just go around and put the the three outer guy lines out and as you'll notice as i pull it out it's just going to change the shape ever so slightly so you might find you need just a little bit of extra extra adjustment so it's a good idea if you do take two trekking poles with you is to use one of them on one of the sides of the tent ideally the sides where your head's going to be it's just going to lift the angle of the inner slightly and just give you a little bit more room inside to stop that slack going onto your face so good thing is about this tent compared to the pro version is that this actually comes from the factory seam sealed just saves all that faff of having to mix up your own sealant and go around the seams a few people recommend actually seam sealing this part of the tent just where the side guy line attaches to the outer uh, now i've had this tent over a year um, i haven't seam sealed it yet and i haven't had any reason to so now we're going to take a look at the door so as you'll see as i mentioned previously this guy line basically comes up and it connects to what's called a ram horn and this is just where you've got a bit of bungee attaching to the bottom of the door where the zip is so if i'm coming in on this side i just want to unhook that and that means i can get in so looking at the door itself you can see it's got this nice handy storm flap and it's got two velcro points one in the center and one at the bottom so as you'll notice on the front of this tent the door is a fair bit off the ground and that is the design of the tent you haven't pitched it wrong it just means it allows ventilation to go under and just help with the condensation but it also means because the wind can get in ideally i'd advise against pitching the front into the wind and opt for either the side or the back it's going to be much stronger now in terms of using this tent in windy conditions i've been in out, out in this in about 20 maybe 25 miles an hour and it's handled that fine i think because because of its natural pyramid shape it really helps to just shed the wind and just run up and over it um, I would be hesitant to take this out in really blustery conditions though I'd maybe, maybe cap it at 35 miles an hour If you do find yourself in really windy conditions what I'd recommend to do is actually drop the trekking pole so this comes down a lot lower get this a lot lower to the ground and you'll find around the sides and the back it'll actually come to the floor um, it will affect the inner, the inner will sag a little bit but just to keep you safe in those conditions it's worth the sacrifice so as we're talking about the door, let's talk about a couple of potential limitations. Um, as you'll see, this is only a one-way zip, which means you can only zip it coming up from the bottom. It doesn't allow you, you know, to crack a little gap at the top for ventilation. Um, the good thing is, though, there is actually a mesh panel just underneath the blackboard here, which just provides just a little bit extra ventilation. Obviously, most of your airflow is going to come from underneath the gap in the door. Moving on to the ram horn. Now, this is something that I've seen a lot of people have issues with especially if you're out in windy conditions basically the problem people have is this plastic ram horn is a little bit flimsy and people have had experiences where it's actually snapped off in the wind it's really easy to upgrade and it's something that i'll probably be doing and just replacing this plastic ram horn with a metal one that you can get for pennies off aliexpress so it can be a little bit fiddly taking this bungee off the ram horn you know particularly if you're in cold conditions and you've got gloves on so when i'm opening the door i'll typically open just one side and I'll pitch the other side, you know, into the winds just to give me a little bit of protection. A really good design feature on this though is this front guy line. Just means if you want to, you can 
detach both the ram horns and roll both of the doors back just so we've got this really open front so i'm going to roll back this side of the tent and as you do so simply want it get the bottom of the door and roll from this point just means that you're going to get a nice tight closure on it and as you'll see there's just a standard little toggle and loop system there which is elasticated so now we've got this rolled back you can see the vestibule the tent fit size is actually really good it's a really good size plenty enough room to keep your bag in there i'll typically leave me 48 litre osprey just leaning against the pole there or off to the sides just so it's out of my way and it's also plenty of room to do you know any of your cooking or your washing up so next let's talk about the interior of the tent so as you can see this is using the four season tea door in it which basically just means there's a zip running from the middle and then all the way across the bottom so if we look to the top you can see there's a small section of mesh and that's basically just going to help the airflow uh, coming up from the bottom of the door and just giving a bit of ventilation going to the interior of the tent and then the main body of the inner is made up of this 15 denier solid nylon this is really good for stopping any drafts hence why it's at the four season inner so then moving on to the bottom you've got this really nice bathtub floor which is going to keep you know keep any water or puddles out and that's made up of a 20 denier nylon which is waterproof to a 6000 hydrostatic head which is absolutely fine it's going to keep all the water out so let's have a proper look at this tea door before moving into the interior so as mentioned before you've basically got this zip that runs the length of the tent as well as your main zip going up the centre it, it, worth mentioning this is only a one-way zip as well so you're not able to you know crack any sort of gap at the top which you can on the other variants of the um, of the inners so a great feature of this is that you can roll out both of the doors so you've got a really open front of the tent and plenty of room to get in and out one thing i would mention which is a little bit of a bugbear as i toggle this out this does seem to hang a little bit i've not found a way of pitching this so it's tight i think i think ideally it'd be great if there was you know a double toggle system but it's not a big issue by any means so a great thing is about this tent is that you can clip out the inner and there are other versions that you can put in uh, most notably there's a full mesh in it which is great for the summer just offers a lot of ventilation let's talk about the space because i do think this is where it's going to divide people who like a bigger tent so just for reference i'm five eight uh, i'm on the floor here if i've got my bed down it's obviously going to lift me up a little bit but to be honest i've found no issues with the space in here uh, if i'm sitting inside i'll typically sit here near the apex it's obviously going to be the tallest part of the tent but for me even when i'm getting changed it's obviously a little bit smaller than a two man you're gonna have a little bit less room but i've honestly found no issues whatsoever so when i went to norway we even used this with two of us inside but obviously not two of us sleeping inside but when it was raining we just chilling here we both sit there we'd have the outer zipped up and we'd have this fully open and there's plenty of room just sitting here you know having a game of cards and having a little drink so yeah you can even get another person in if you wanted to so as mentioned i'm five eight so if i lie down i've got bags of room ahead of me and spare room down towards the feet end as well and just to illustrate here if i lie down there is plenty of room here There's, i've got no material sagging it's worth mentioning i'm obviously on the ground here i'll be lifted up again if i'm on my bed but again i found no issues with this with this sagging but it is a reason why you want to take a little bit of time just learning about the setup and getting it right because if it's not set up properly you know to the correct height if it's not if the guy lines aren't set out properly you can find this tent really does sag so it's worth taking the time to get that right in my opinion and then if you look towards the back of the tent here you can see it just pulls out a little bit just gives you a little bit of extra space i typically like to just leave a few extra bits there so one of the limitations of this tent and where it falls back just a little bit in my opinion is the storage options so if you see over here at the back of the tent you've just got this one small pocket and that's literally all you've got in here so all you're really getting in there is you might get your phone your keys a couple of the bits but not much else really it's something that i don't really understand when manufacturers do it, it's something that wouldn't cost a lot more to produce and it would add a lot more value to the tent so it's not a big issue but just a little bit of a frustration really so if you look to the top of the tent as most tents do it's just got a nice little hook there that you can put your lantern on 
Now, what this tent hasn't got is any sort of washing line, um, and it doesn't look to me like you'd really be able to customise that and put it in, just because of the shape of the actual interior. I think if you're trying to hang anything up, it just slipped down. Um, again, I've not really found this to be an issue, but if you do like to hang things up, you haven't really got the option there. As an alternative, if you did want to hang something up and the weather wasn't bad, you could just use this front guy line and hang a few bits over there. Or something I quite like to do is I'll get the loop of my trekking pole and I like to just loop the hood of me waterproof jacket and I'll just let it hang on there. So next let's talk about condensation, which is obviously a massive topic when it comes to tents. And in my opinion, I've not suffered any sort of, you know, any sort of major condensation. So I think as long as you've set this up properly and your door is allowing ventilation in, you're going to get minimal condensation. So another thing that does help the condensation is the fact that this is a two wall tent. You can buy this tent in what's called the pro version, which is a single skin, but I know that can, as a lot of single skin tents, um, it can suffer with condensation. So in my opinion, I'd prefer to go for the two wall version. So in conclusion, is this the best budget ultralight one person tent on the market? For me, I really think it could be. I've loved using this tent over the past year. It's inexpensive, but I've found it to be stable and really fun to use. And at the price point, I think it really does contend with some of the big boys. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have this tent, let us know what you think, what you love about it, what you hate about it. Or alternatively, let us know what your go-to tent is going to be this summer. If you did find value in this video, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And hit the bell to get notifications when we drop new videos. We've got plenty of wild camp and adventure videos on the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more reviews this year.